What is going on everybody? I'm Noah, this is Madison Angling. Welcome to Shop Talk and guess what? We are at a shop today. We are at DNS Bait Tackle and Fly Shop here on the north side of Madison. We got Harley, man in the counter back here. Pat is not here today. He might swing in while we're doing this video. That'd be kind of fun. We'll just put him on the spot and just throw a camera in his face and see what happens. But anyway, just wanted to share with you guys my new partnership here with DNS Bait Tackle and Fly Shop. Uh, if you are in Madison looking for bait, whatever you need, lures, soft plastics, rigging, live bait, ice fishing, open water, they got it. And if they don't have it, you don't need it. So going forward here, we're probably going to be shooting quite a few of these shop talk videos right here in the shop. So we can talk about it. And you guys, if you want it, if you're in the Madison area, you can come pick it up. So today we're going to be talking about tip ups, right? It's ice season or sort of ice season. Some of you watching this probably have ice down here in Madison. We don't really have ice yet, but this coming week, we've got some really cold temperatures. We're gonna be making ice. And I don't know about you guys, but toothy fish through the ice, especially early ice, it's hard to beat. So we're talking tip ups today. We are going to be covering how I like to set up my tip ups for both pike and walleyes and show you guys just a couple little tweaks that I have with some of my rigs. Some of you probably set these up very similarly to how I do it, but there's a couple things that I might do just a little different. So here we go, let's talk about it. All right, so we're putting Harley to work here. He is my cameraman for this video. And like I said, we're talking tip up. So the first thing that I'm gonna throw out there that I maybe do a little different than the rest of you is actually this right here. This is actually a VMC crankbait snap, which is kinda, kinda goofy, right? Why would I be using a crankbait snap on a tip up? In fact, they happen to have them right here in stock. So if you look at these, what's kind of cool is you'll notice that it's sort of a teardrop shape, right? It has a nice taper to it. And I do like to put my, uh, my inline weight just above my snap. So the reason I have a snap is because I like to multitask my tip ups. I like to use them for both pike as well as walleyes. And depending on the day and where we're fishing, it's nice to be able to just swap leaders real quick and you're swapping species just like that. So that's why I run snaps on all of my tip ups. So I've got about a quarter ounce egg sinker, just enough weight to kind of help you get your bait down and that snap, this VMC crankbait snap. So you can see it has kind of that nice taper to it. We'll put it up against my hand so you can kind of see it here. What's nice about that is it keeps it from snagging on the ice, which is obviously a problem, right? You don't want to get hung up on the ice pulling your bait or your line or a fish up through the ice. So this nice tapered design lets the line slide right up over the edge of the ice. No problems, no tangles, and it makes switching your rigs super quick and easy. Uh, as far as the business end on my tip ups goes, you can see I've got just a regular old beaver dam tip up. We've got the Jolly Roger because ex emo kid stuff, right? Black is cool. So uh, <laughs> by the way, they are fully stocked and they've got all kinds of cool new stuff. In fact, there's a really cool new Wonder Bread pattern tip up. We gotta show you guys that. You haven't seen it yet. It's pretty freaking cool. And I might have to get a couple of these because who doesn't like Wonder Bread? Wonder Bread's awesome. But these guys are fully stocked, whatever you want. Or if you just want the OG, the straight up old school original recipe, they got a bunch of them. So continuing on though, I'm like a squirrel. My my. I can't be in here. It's too distracting. I'm looking at all this stuff. Anyway, back to what we're talking about. So line, you can use pretty much whatever you like. I like to run 30 pound, just regular Dacron, you know, Beaver Dam ice line. I also use suffix ice braid, uh, or sorry, tip up line, whatever you like. But I like to use about 30 pound. I think it's a perfect blend for, for both species. It's not too heavy for walleyes. It's plenty heavy for pike. So it's a nice crossover line. It's not too bulky. It's not too light. Just good old 30 pound ice braid. All right, so we got the snap figured out. We got the line, we got a little bit of weight on there. As far as the, the business end, business end, our leader and our hooks, um, this is what I like to run for walleyes, guys. Uh, it's basically just a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. You can use eight, you can use 10, you can use 12, you can use 15, whatever the conditions call for. For me here in Madison, I like 10 to 12. Uh, it's nice and thin very, very hard to see underwater. It's light enough that the bait can move around just fine. It's not too wiry that the fish are gonna feel a lot of resistance and drop it. So that's kind of my go-to. Uh, and on the, the business end, I like to run treble hooks. And I usually run anywhere from like a size 10 to a size 12. Uh, these mustads are a great option as well as the eagle claws. Um, personally, I, I kind of like the mustads a little bit better. They seem to have a little bit lighter wire, which I think works a little better for more finicky bites. So anywhere in that like size 10 to size 12. 
and I'm running that on about a 24 inch uh, liter. You could go a little longer, you could go a little shorter if you like, but I kind of like this, this about two foot long liter and just a split shot, just a little extra weight about halfway down the liter to help keep your minnow down. So how many times have you dropped uh, a minnow down a hole, right? And you're kind of just watching it swim around there and your minnow, let's say, you know, we're looking down the hole, right? And your minnow is up here doing this number, you know, swimming around, swimming around, swimming around up above your, your, your weight, right? Things get a little tangly, a little weird, especially if you're fishing deeper water and you got to send this thing down 20, 25 feet or so, right? So adding a split shot about halfway down your leader and you can even go a little bit closer to the hook if you wanted, even, you know, two thirds of the way down towards the hook helps a lot with keeping your minnows down where you want them versus them trying to swim around and get away, especially if you're using bigger baits like, you know, a medium or even a larger shiner or, uh, or black tail chubs. They like to do all kinds of crazy stuff and get tangled. So having a little extra weight a little bit closer to your hook makes a really big difference in keeping your bait free and not fouling it up. And that's pretty much it for walleyes. As far as the, the business end goes, use whatever you want. Early ice, I really like black tail chubs. Uh, fathead minnows on really cold days work really, really well too. And then the OG medium shiner, you can't beat it. Uh, and in fact, another one that you guys maybe don't use, and if you do, comment below, drop a comment. Let me know what your favorite live bait is for walleyes on tip-ups. Uh, suckers, little bitty suckers. If you go come in here, get the, the pike mix, there's lots of little suckers and shiners and stuff. They're perfect for walleyes, especially big walleyes. They're super durable. You can use them over and over again. And uh, I don't know, they just like suckers, man. So give it a try. If you want to shake things up a little bit, maybe you're looking for a new secret weapon, give the little sh the little suckers, well, I'll say that three times fast. Give the little suckers a try this winter. They work really well, super durable. They're awesome. So. That is pretty much how I set my walleye tip-ups. So guys, if you want, you can come down and pick up the goodies to tie your own leaders. We got some 10 pound Seaguar Fluoro here, 25 yards for 15 bucks. Get yourself a couple packs of hooks, a couple different sizes, tie them up yourselves, or get some pre-made leaders, guys. They got a whole bunch of them over here for pike and walleyes, 10 pound Fluoro. We got a nice looking hook on there. We've got looped ends on these so you can just swap them out with your snap super quick and easy. Uh, there's also some options that have swivels, which we're gonna talk about here for pike. So I use the same tip ups. I don't change anything. Uh, the only thing I might maybe do is add a little more lead. If I'm using bigger baits and I know I'm using bigger baits that day, I might up my lead situation a little bit. I may go up to a 3 8 ounce egg weight, even sometimes a half ounce, which is a lot. But if I have big baits and they're really active, I might swap that smaller sinker out for something a little bigger. Otherwise, the snap stays the same, the tip up is the same, the line is the same. But then we get down to the business end here. So. If you guys want, again, instead of tying your own stuff, they've got hand-tied rigs right here in the shop. In fact, I'm gonna open this up right now and I'm probably gonna have to coil this all back up when we're done shooting, but we've got 30 pound floor, we got a 14 inch leader and we've got two hooks. In fact, what's really cool about these guys is you know, a lot of double hook pike rigs have basically two individual hooks. They're kind of crimped together or they're tied together. What's cool with these rigs is you've got a slider hook. So these rigs are super adjustable depending on the size of the bait you're using. Obviously, not all rigs fit every bait, you know, that, that might get scooped into your bucket, right? Sometimes you get a couple real big ones, sometimes you have some smaller stuff. This makes it so much more adjustable. Doesn't change your hooking percentage at all because that slides, if anything, it makes it better because of better hook placement. Hook placement on tip ups and, and hook setting devices is everything and that's gonna be a topic for another video here. But save yourself the time Pick up a couple of these rigs. What are these running, Harley? We got uh, two ninety nine. Two ninety nine on the pike rig, and, and one ninety nine on the walleye. One ninety nine for a walleye leader. So you can make your own if that's what you're into, or come in and buy them pre-made. They're ready to rock. They're cheap. Buy a bunch of them made right here in Madison, guys. So. That is going to be our shop talk video for this week. Please drop your questions down below. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you're in the market for some gear, if you're like me and you're just waiting, we're kind of in limbo, right? We don't really have ice yet, but open water is not really a thing. And you find yourself just kind of looking and tinkering and stuff, stop on down to DNS, check it out. Get yourself a hat too. They got some really sweet new beanies, um, cool swag. But again, like I said, they got everything and we're gonna, we're gonna do, do some perch fishing this winter. We're gonna shoot some videos. But if you're looking for perch weights, they got the hookup. These are hard to find. So guys, come on down, spend some money, 
get rigged up. Super, super excited to be working with everybody here at DNS, making these videos from now on. And we will see you guys on the next episode. See ya.